Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on vortex ring state, sometimes called settling with power. So what is vortex ring state? Well, at a very basic level, vortex ring state is a situation where you are descending into your own turbulent weight. So you have a bunch of highly turbulent air and your downwash, if you will, from your main rotor is being pushed down, let's say 300 feet per minute, and you're descending at 300 feet per minute or greater into all of that very not smooth air. You're descending into a boatload of turbulence. So if you look at what that looks like in terms of you know, the rotor and the air flowing from the rotor, you will see that you essentially have your normal tip vortices and then you have additional vortices coming up in the middle. So if you look at the picture, you'll notice that there's essentially very little wing that's holding you up anymore. And why is this a dangerous situation? Well, it doesn't sound great, does it? The other thing is that what can happen is if you try to get out of this by just increasing power, you raise the collective, you just make it worse. You just added to the portion of that rotor that stalled. So you've generated more turbulence and you're descending through the turbulence. So the more you try to pull up on that collective, the worse the situation becomes. So how do you get into the situation? Three conditions must be true in order for you to get in this situation. And you have to have all three. So to get out of it, all you need to do is eliminate one of these three conditions. So the first condition is that you're descending vertically or nearly vertically at more than 300 feet per minute. Now it's gonna depend a little bit on the weight of your helicopter and some other factors, but normally we say if you're descending at more than 300 feet per minute, that's bad if you have the other two conditions met. So what are the other two conditions? Well, the second condition is that you have some power driving that rotor. So you have at least 20% power, so between 20 and 100% power. And the third condition is that you are below ETL speed, below that effective translational lift speed, which again is between 16 and 24 knots for a typical helicopter. So if I'm coming in, let's say I'm trying to do a steep approach and I'm coming in too slowly and I have a huge rate of descent and I just keep pulling collective and pulling collective, I can get into a vortex ring state, also known as settling with power. Why do they call it settling with power? Well, if you're close to the ground, guess what? You're going to settle to the ground with power and you're probably going to hit pretty hard. It might destroy a helicopter. Hopefully you, you don't injure a bunch of people as well. And it took them a while to figure this stuff out. You know, they destroyed a few helicopters before they figured out what was going on here because helicopter aerodynamics are kind of complicated. Okay. So, you know, what's the best way to get out of this? Well, the best way, of course, is never to get into it. So be cognizant of these three conditions. Again, you have to have all three in order to get into settling with power. So you only need to eliminate one of them and you're good. There are two methods for recovering from vortex rain state. There's the traditional method and there's something called the Bouchard method. So what's the traditional method? Well, you want to exit the vortices. How do you do that? You want to get some forward speed and possibly drop the collective a little bit. So basically you're going to fly out of it by flying forward and dropping the collective a little bit. Why dropping the collective? Remember, the more collective you have, then it's going to be worse. Right? You're stalling more of that rotor. So you increase your airspeed and or partially lower the collective in order to exit. Well, Michard 
came up with a better way. Why is it a better way? Well, it's a lot quicker way to do this. So how does that work? The Fichard method says, hey, let's eliminate those vortices and let's kind of escape them with a little bit quicker path. So how does that work? What you do in the Fichard method is you will move laterally. So you're gonna put in a little bit of lateral cyclic toward the advancing blade, which in the case of an American helicopter would be the right blade. So you're gonna put in some right cyclic and you're also going to put in some left pedal. You're gonna put in left pedal, right cyclic, and increase collective in order to get out of this. So how is this gonna work? And you're trying to get that advancing blade out into that clean air. You are using the thrust of the tail rotor to help get you there. Remember how we have translational drift because of that tail rotor? Well, let's put it to some good use. We just basically scoot out to the side and we can actually raise the collective and increase the power because now we're getting out into that clean air. And you can recover with a lot less altitude loss using this method. Now, typically when you practice these things, you want to be several thousand feet in the air just because, right? You know, don't practice these at 200 AGL. In aviation, we talk about, you know, practicing emergencies. And one of the goals in these practices is that you never want to turn a simulated emergency into a real emergency. Enough talking. I'm going to fly up a little bit here and on this nice windy, cloudy day and show you what this looks like. Method is definitely not as quick as 